Unfortunately, dogs are rarely affected with the major type of heart disease seen in humans, blockage of arteries by plaque. However, dogs do frequently develop congestive heart failure. Congestive heart failure normally is a long-term condition in which a weakened heart does not pump enough blood to maintain normal body functions. Excess body fluids tend to back up into the lungs, the abdomen, and or body tissues, depending on which part of the heart is involved. Signs that may be associated with this condition include shortness of breath, tiring easily during minimal exercise, deep, dry coughing, weight loss, enlarged abdomen, swollen puffy legs, blue discoloration of the tongue and lips, and fainting spells. During late stages of congestive heart failure, the cough may become wet as fluid accumulates in the lungs. Congestive heart failure can result from diseases affecting the heart valves, birth defects, infections, heartworms, aging, or any disorder that causes the heart muscle itself to become weakened. Dilated cardiomyopathy is a specific heart condition characterized by the heart muscle becoming thinner and losing its ability to pump blood strongly. Because the heart muscle is thin and weak, it is more difficult for the heart chambers to completely empty with each contraction. Cardiomyopathy is seen most often in larger breeds of dogs, particularly Boxers, Great Danes, and Dobermans, and occasionally in medium-sized breeds like Spaniels. Congestive heart failure caused by valve problems is the most common in small breeds of dogs and is not obvious until the end stage of the disorder. Heart failure tends to develop fairly slowly over a period of time. Recent research indicates that routine ECG screening may show telltale signs of the potential for cardiomyopathy up to two years before clinical signs develop. This allows preventive measures to be taken, which can minimize the effects or slow down the progress of this condition. Congestive heart failure is diagnosed with a review of a comprehensive medical history, thorough physical examination, and various specific tests, including electrocardiograms, x-rays, and ultrasound. Blood tests are also important in evaluating the secondary effects of decreased internal organ function. Once a complete picture of the body's overall condition is assessed, the appropriate treatment plan can be recommended. Treatment may include diuretics to remove fluid from the body, vasodilators to enlarge internal size of blood vessels, making it easier for the blood to flow through the vessels, heart stimulants and strengtheners, enzyme blockers, dietary supplements, and food changes. Although most of the damage to the heart is usually permanent, many patients can be stabilized and live a comfortable life with proper medical and dietary management. Thank you.